So in this video, I'd like to introduce the concept of unit testing. But before we actually start writing some unit tests, I'd like to take a minute just to justify why we should be using unit tests to test our code. If you remember the computer object that we created in previous videos, I did create some simple tests down here inside of a main method to, just to check to make sure that everything was working the way I intended it to. And this was fine for our purposes, very simple, not, not a whole lot going on here. But imagine if something changed, if the behavior of our object changed for whatever reason, or maybe I needed to add some, some behavior to our object. If I wanted to test it to see if it would work, I now have to go through the output of these tests and check it myself manually to make sure that all of the behaviors still work properly. Not only that, but consider if something fails earlier on in the tests, then all of the values that come after that failure would be potentially affected by that single, single failure earlier on in my tests. So in order to get around these undesirable um, effects, we create what's called unit tests. A unit test is a very small method, a very small chunk of code whose sole purpose in life is to test the functionality of one of our behaviors of our objects, one of the methods of our objects. They're very small, like I said. Um, they're called unit tests because they test a single unit of our objects. They're not meant to test everything. One test is going to cover a very small piece, which means it does not depend on the other tests that exist for this particular object. Now I want to show you how to create some unit tests. And in order to do that, we're going to take a look at this add memory method and write a couple of tests for it. Now, if you remember, the way that this method works is there's a maximum on the amount of memory our computer can have. If I go over the maximum amount of memory, which is 8 gigabytes, I'm actually not going to add the memory. I'm just going to return. Otherwise, I actually will add the amount of memory that was requested to my computer. So I want to make tests that are, are sure to cover both of these potential scenarios. I want to make sure to thoroughly test this method, make sure that all of the possible cases are behaving the way I expect them to. So let's create some unit tests for this, uh, for this method. The way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to right click and select new JUnit test case. And now it's asking me for a name. I'm going to call it computer tester. And it comes up with a very basic template for my tests. You can see here it gives me a very simple test method that says it's not yet implemented. We're about to change that. But before we do, I like to rename my tests. To, be, uh, to indicate which of the methods we're actually going to be testing. So in this case, since I'm testing add memory, I'll go ahead and rename this method test add memory. Now before we can test the add memory method, I need an instance of the object that, uh, so that I can actually call the method on that object. So typically the first thing that we're going to want to do in our tests is create an object for us to use, create an object for us to manipulate. So I'll go ahead and do that now by calling the constructor of the computer class, new computer. And since I'm testing memory, I want to be careful about what value I pass in for the memory. I'm going to choose the value of 4 for this particular test. Now again, these unit tests are very compartmentalized. I'm only testing the add memory method here, which means that the values that I type in for uh, the processor and the brand name really aren't particularly relevant to this test but I still need to fill them in. So I'll just go ahead and fill them in with some values, even though for this particular test, they're not that important. Since I am testing the add memory method, the next thing I need to do is call that method. So I'll say C dot add memory. And in this case, I want it to work the normal way. I'm not gonna test the maximum boundary, the maximum value of my add memory method in this particular test case. So I'll pick a small value like 2. 4 plus 2 means that the amount of memory this computer should have after adding the memory on is 6. Now in order to do, perform the actual tests, we need to insert something called assertions. An assertion is usually just a, a way of telling something telling the, the computer, telling Java, that you expect something to be true at a particular point in time. So for example, if we look at this simple test here, I expect the value, uh, the amount of memory that this computer has to be 4 after I construct it. And after I call this add memory method, I expect that value to be 6. So I can add some assertions in here to that effect. 
The way that I do that is I say assert true. I'm giving you a statement that I expect to be true. What is the statement that I expect to be true? C dot get memory equals four. There's a similar assert true statement that we can include after the add memory method. I'll say C dot get memory equals six. We have written our first unit test for the add memory method. Now, in order to run this test, we can actually run it much the same way that we run our Java programs. I right click the file and go down to run as and select J unit test. And you can see over here, this green bar is a good thing. That means our test succeeded. And I can actually expand this to see the test itself, test add memory. That's the name of the test that we wrote. And there's a little green checkbox, which means that the test was successful. If the test was not successful, let me show you what that would look like. If I come up here and I change this value to be three, that is clearly not what we would expect normally since I say right here in the constructor, it should be four. So let me rerun this test by clicking the rerun test button and show you what happens. Since I gave it a value that it doesn't expect, a value of three, the test fails and I see this blue X and this red bar here to indicate that some of my tests failed. You'll notice, however, that it doesn't really tell me why my test failed. There's no messages explaining what happened. It just says that the test failed. So it's good practice to insert some messages explaining each test as well. I can do that right here in my assert true statement. So this first one, a message, a good message might be something like problem setting memory in the constructor. And for the second assertion, a good message might be something like problem updating memory in add memory. And now if these tests fail, I'll actually have a descriptive message that tells me what the problem was so that I can go figure out what the bug is. Now if I rerun these tests, I expect it to fail like it did before, but down here at the bottom, you can see that my error message is printed out and it tells me exactly what the problem is. Let me change this back so that it's a successful test. And what I would like to do next is actually test that second case of the add memory function. I'd like to test that case where we hit the maximum. In order to do this, I'm gonna create a second test. I know I'm testing the same method, so it's very tempting to test that maximum boundary in this same test here. But really we wanna keep these unit tests small. We wanna keep them um, small and they only wanna test very small pieces of our code at a time. That way I don't run into that domino effect that I was talking about where one failed test causes all of my other tests to fail as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this, copy this method and we'll just manipulate it to change it so that it um, tests our maximum memory boundary on this particular method. Notice I did copy this as well, this at test. That is an indicator to Java that this is a unit test as opposed to just a regular method. I'm going to change the name of this method to test add memory max. And I'm going to change the value in the constructor to be eight, which is our maximum memory value. Now, when I call add memory, it should just leave the, the memory as it was before. So in my assertion statements, I'm going to change both of them to be 8. And then finally, I'm going to update my messages, my error messages. This one's actually fine, problem setting memory in the constructor. That's a good error message. But this one here, problem updating memory and add memory when we hit the maximum allowed memory. I want to give a little bit more descriptive message so that we know why this failure is occurring. And now I can run my tests. And I see that everything has succeeded. And my new test is now added to this list. And I can see that everything is happy and everything works the way it's supposed to. To show you the real power of unit tests and to wrap this video up, I actually want to go back to my computer method and consider the case when I change the behavior of this method for some reason. Maybe I change the maximum of my, uh, the maximum memory for my computer from eight to 16. 
that actually has a pretty big effect on how this memory, on how this method behaves. So if I run my tests now, I would actually expect one of them to fail. That's a good thing. That indicates that my tests are doing their job. They're detecting changes in the behavior of my code. So if I run these tests again, you'll notice that the first test actually succeeds still. Nothing that I've changed should affect the way that this first test operates. But the maximum boundary is now higher. So the second test, test add memory max, fails. And again, I want to reiterate that that's a good thing. That means the tests are doing my job. They've detected a change in behavior. And when I see a test failing, that means one of two things. Either I need to update the tests to reflect the new expectations for my behavior, or I unexpectedly change the behavior of my code, and I need to go visit my object code, my class, to see if I made any unintentional changes to the behavior that I was not intending to put in. In this case, I intended to change the maximum amount of memory for a computer object, so it's my test that needs to be updated. I can fix this by switching this to be 16, and then changing my assertions to check for 16 as well, reflecting the new behavior that I expect for my computer class. And now if I rerun my tests, you see that everything else has passed and everybody is happy again. It's good practice to write at least one unit test for every method in your class. Oftentimes, you're going to want multiple unit tests for methods in your class, such as you saw in this example here. So in future labs and future p-sets and studios, we're going to actually expect you to write unit tests. And in the future, we're going to grade your assignments using unit tests as well.